Now, if you have two sets of simultaneous equations with two unknowns, two linear equations, there's only three possibilities, okay? Three cases of what can happen. Either the two lines are going to intersect at one distinct point, okay? Or uh, the two lines are going to be parallel and never beat. Or the third case is that the two lines are precisely the same thing. And so the two lines completely overlap and hence have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so how do you identify which situation is which? Okay, using our matrix knowledge. So here I have three pairs of simultaneous equations. Okay, now if we have a look at the first one, then we would have 2, 5, 3, 8 multiplied by x, y is equal to 28, 44. Okay? Now, if we were to go about solving this, so multiplying this by its inverse matrix, okay, then if we were to do that, so going into the matrix solver, uh, matrix A, two rows, two columns, 2, 5, 3, 8, and uh, define the second matrix, uh, two rows, one column, 28, 44. Then in the matrix calculation, we can do matrix A to the minus 1 uh, times by matrix B. And we get 4, 4. Okay? Now, what that's identifying is that we have these two lines, okay, 2x plus 5y equals 28. Um, I don't know, so uh, when y is 0, we get x is 14, um, and when x is 0, we get 28 over 5. So something that looks something like that. Um, that's our first line. And then our second line, 3x plus 8y is equal to 44. Uh, we'll be intersecting this other one, um, so something like this, say, at this point, um, 4, 4. Okay, so you get this distinct solution, okay? And this is coming from the fact that the matrix that you've got here, its determinant is non-zero. So the determinant of the matrix 2, 5, 3, 8 is equal to 2 times 8, so 16, take away 15, so it's equal to 1. It's non-zero. So because it's non-zero, you're going to get these two lines intersecting at a distinct point. Now, in these two situations, okay, let's have a look at this one. So we've got 2, 5, 4, 10, okay, multiplying with x, y is equal to 28, 30. Now, in this situation, if we looked at the determinant of this matrix, 2, 5, 4, 10, you're going to get 2 lots of 10, take away 4 lots of 5. 20, take 20. Okay? So we get 0 determinant. If we looked at the matrix for this one, 2, 5, 4, 10, x, y, is 28, 56, then, of course, we're going to get the same value determinant. So the fact that the determinant is 0 is an identifying feature that you're not going to get a unique solution, a distinct coordinate of intersection for the two lines. However, beyond that, the determinant doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't tell you whether we've got um, no solution whatsoever or whether we've got an infinite number of solutions. Okay? For that, we've got to do a little bit more investigative work. So, for this one here, okay, what you've actually got is a situation where you've got the first line, 2x plus 5y equals 28, and the 4x plus 10y is equal to 30. Okay, if you were to divide through that by 2, you get 2x plus 5y is equal to 15. 
Okay. So actually, it would be a line looking something like that. And so these two lines are parallel because these two values are not the same. The 28 is not equal to 15. So 28 not equal to 15, so they are parallel. Okay, and so because they're parallel, there is no solution. Whereas in this situation, we've got the 2x plus 5y equals 28. Okay, that wasn't very good, was it? I don't know if that was even better. That was any better. Um, so we've got 2x plus 5y equals 28. But if I was to multiply this equation by 2, I would get precisely this one. So the two lines are the same. They are overlapping one another. Okay. So because uh, 28 is half the 56, well, this equation is half of this one, there is an infinite number of solutions. whereas this had no solutions. So the determinant being zero didn't tell us enough, OK? It, if the determinant is non-zero, then we know we've got a distinct set of solutions, or uh, sorry, a, a distinct point of intersection. If the determinant is zero, then we need to do a little bit more work to figure out which type of problem it is. Now, when we extend this up into 3D, which is what we're going to be going on to in the next few videos, this problem of the determinant being zero is the key identifier, but there are a few more situations that we can have in three dimensions that we need to be able to deal with and figure out which situation we are dealing with. Okay, So we're going to be moving on to, rather than lines, planes in a 3D space, OK? So um, there is a lot of vectors knowledge uh, that is quite useful this stage. So what you might be thinking about is, well, if, I, if you're a student at a college, it's likely that you would be taught the vectors knowledge before going on to looking at the geometrical interpretation for planes. OK, um, so you may want to do that first, but I'm try I'll try and make the videos uh, for planes and the problems in 3D as accessible as I can without doing much of the vectors knowledge. OK, so it allows you to access them straight away rather than have to learn a whole lot of other information first.